um, order of business is public comment. We have Ken Ethia who wants to speak about Patrick Foley. Mr. Ethia, if you could come forward, please. Thank you. Good evening, members of the Board of Selectmen, Madam Town Manager, Mr. Kasanovich. I would first off like to thank, I'm sorry, I would like to congratulate uh, so Selectman Low Liberty in his new seat and Selectman Carpenter in his re-election. Uh, I'm here tonight to tell a little bit about Patrick Foley. Some years ago, uh, we actually got a, uh, I guess I can't call it a committee, a volunteer group together and put a stone and a plaque in his name. Patrick Foley was a fire captain in the town of Auburn who died in the line of duty in 1930 and never really got much recognition whatsoever. Things weren't, they say the good old days, but they probably weren't as good as uh, maybe we thought they were. Patrick Foley lived on Rocky Ave worked at the Worcester Rendering Company that was uh, right across from Hampton Street on Southbridge Street. And on this day, uh, he was called to fight a fire on Andrew Thayer's property up on Package Yard Hill. It was a, it was a uh, dairy cattle farm. And uh, Patrick Foley went to fight that fire and, and died. It was um, March 6, 1930. And uh, he was the first Auburn fireman killed the line of duty. Once we got the plaque in town, uh, well, well, let me tell you first off, it was the late Norma Codd, Ken Holstrom, Chief Wynott, and myself that worked to get that stone put in. We had a nice celebration. But from that day to now, I always wanted uh, Patrick Foley's picture to be in the fire station so people could actually go in there in their uh, whatever business they needed to do and see his picture and uh, just know a little bit about him or he was a true hero. The people in the museum always knew I wanted the picture but we never could find one. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Richard Hedden, I have to thank him because he took a large picture, a group picture, and uh, did his magic on it. Made it into a nice picture that uh, is presentable and will certainly uh, fit well at the, at the fire station. Uh, I would also like to thank Renee Pease, who took that completed picture, and, uh, well, I'm going to show it to you in a minute, and did, uh, I guess they call it matting, had it matted for me so it, so it could hang and be something that would really look nice. Um, with that, I, I would like to ask Chief Coleman and I guess Ken Holstrom, I guess the both of you need to uh, come up so I could present it to you, if you would, please. I had asked Chief Coleman uh, a while back if he would put it in the fire station, and he agreed that he would. And uh, I, I just think it's going to be so special to have his picture up there. With that, I'd like to thank Chief Coleman and uh, Ken Holstrom. Chief Coleman. Thank you very much. Ken. Thank you very much. There he is. Oh, that's a spectacular picture. Spectacular. <clears throat> Can we turn it around for the viewing audience? Absolutely. Actually, you want to bring it up and show them? Sure. I want to turn it so that people can see. Madam Chairman, thank you. Uh, thank you to the rest of the board uh, for allowing me to speak. I want to thank Mr. Ethier and the, the rest of the members at the Historical Society for working on this uh, project. This has been a, a long time in the making. We've been talking about this for uh, several, several months. Um, the reason that I asked uh, Mr. Holstrom to join me is, as everybody knows, he's a retired lieutenant from the department. He's uh, sort of the unofficial historian of the department. Uh, he is someone that we go to quite often when we're trying to, uh, to know the history uh, of the department. He keeps many
many of the records. Uh, and he was involved uh, in dedicating that stone um, uh, to Captain Foley behind the station. So I, I thought it'd be appropriate uh, that he assist in, in getting this uh, this evening. Again, uh, thank Mr. Ethia, thank the Historical Society. You know, we often talk about uh, never forget uh, Captain Foley has been gone for over 80 years, and uh, we currently have a small plaque in the in the station that recognizes uh, the line of duty death. Uh, as the, the plaque indicates, he was the first. Uh, unfortunately, he was not the last. In the 60s, we lost Deputy Chief Doc Pierce uh, as well at another uh, building fire. Uh, so those two gentlemen, their names are in the station, uh, but this is the only photo that we have of, of Captain Foley. So we're, we're proud to be able to display it in the station. We will display it uh, on uh, so again, so we can live up to what, what we always say, which is never forget. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ethia. I'd like to say a little myself. Um, I did a lot of research on this. Uh, Several years ago when I uh, wrote the history of the fire department, I had many interviews and uh, some of the interviews I had asked people about Captain Patrick Foley and there was not many stories told. Other than the newspaper clipping, uh, there was not much said. Uh, so it was a pretty quiet uh, event. Uh, the stories were not told, so it's one for the ages. My brother and I last year uh, went to Maryland and he, as well as Doc Pierce, as the chief had mentioned, uh, registered in the National Fallen <coughs> Firefighters Memorial in Maryland. And uh, there was a brick down there in their name. Um, the obituaries, uh, pictures of what we had at the time, and um, newspaper clippings to identify exactly what had happened is down now in Maryland and is now recognized nationally. So this is welcomed and the fire department appreciates it, I appreciate it, the Historical Society appreciates it, and I'm sure the town of Auburn appreciates all he did. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Holstrom.